to debrief, iconic rock band Pink Floyd has plenty of fans in Israel, but for the group's former frontman Roger Waters, the feeling is not exactly mutual. He's become one of the most vocal frontmen of the boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement targeting Israel, better known as BDS. Most recently, Waters got in a very public he said, he said in his efforts to get Radiohead to pull out of performing in Tel Aviv. But next month, a new documentary is joining in on the argument. Our culture correspondent, Maya Margit, sat down with the director of Wish You Weren't Here. He's among the top grossing musicians in the world, a co-founder of Pink Floyd, one of the most influential and popular rock bands in musical history. More recently, Roger Waters has become known as a spokesman for the Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions, or BDS movement, targeting Israel. And now Waters is the subject of a new movie by best-selling author and filmmaker Ian Halperin. The documentary film is called Wish You Weren't Here, and it's looking to expose the dark side of the former Pink Floyd frontman. Being the son of a Holocaust survivor, I, I, I almost fell off my chair that somebody was able to be out on tour and during his tour dress up in a Nazi uniform and have pigs floating around with the Star of David emblazoned on it and make all these uh, nefarious statements against uh, the state of Israel and against the Jewish people. Halperin has directed many films on famous musicians, Kurt Cobain, Michael Jackson and Lady Gaga. But now he's shining the spotlight on Waters, who's called Israel an apartheid state and even compared it to Nazi Germany. In this conflict, that means ending Israel's occupation, colonization, ethnic cleansing, and the denial of the right to self-determination. So what Roger Waters is spewing goes much far beyond freedom of expression. It's an ingrained hatred towards the Jewish people in Israel. And this is not me saying this. This is, this is the world's leading experts who appear in my film. Some of those interviewed include the president of the World Jewish Congress, Ronald Lauder, veteran music executive, David Renzer, and members of the Israeli parliament. Also, famous radio talk show host, Howard Stern, who's come out vociferously against Waters. And it bugs the shit out of Roger Waters. He can't f deal with it. He's writing letters to Bon Jovi. Don't go there. It's a terrible place. Where do you want the Jews to go, Roger? Where do you want them to go? The film portrays the musician's activism as going well beyond healthy criticism of Israel. In fact, according to Halperin, it's an obsession that reaches back decades. Musicians who have played with Waters, and shockingly, they told me he's, uh, Roger Waters has been like cracking Jewish jokes for the last 20 years before he even called for the boycott. But Halperin argues the film is not just about tearing down Waters or BDS supporters, but about presenting both sides of the story. Though his past documentaries have aired in over 160 countries, Halperin says he's been facing an uphill battle to distribute this particular film. Ultimately, Halperin is hoping to give those willing to listen an education in contemporary anti-Semitism. And I'm hoping, by doing all these interviews, I'm hoping that all the corporate sponsors wake up and decide to take action against this man who is perpetrating hatred toward the state of Israel and the Jewish people. Halperin believes the final cut of his film will be another brick in the wall shielding against anti-Semitism. Maya Margit, I-24 News. Our culture correspondent, Maya Margit, here with us. Maya, so we heard a couple of pretty juicy sound bites in there, and him speaking largely to prominent Jewish figures. Did he also speak to people in the BDS movement? This was something I actually asked him because I, I, I asked him, you know, don't you feel like you're creating an echo chamber by interviewing so many leading Jewish scholars or members of the Jewish community? And he told me that in the film, which has not been entirely released, I only saw excerpts from it, he said that in the film there are Muslim scholars, Hindu scholars, uh, politicians from the U.S. US, Israeli Arab politicians, many different kinds of points of view and perspectives to discuss Roger Waters and the BDS movement. What about Roger Waters himself? That's right. So what claims made against him. Did he get a chance to respond? Apparently, uh, him and his camp and all his producers are not responding to any comments from the media or from Ian Halper. And Ian Halper told me he tried to contact him numerous times and was unable to get any kind of response.
And in terms of when this is going to be released, he's had he has some claims about why it is or isn't being released. It is going to be a release. Uh, in the past, these films have been released in hundreds, uh, you know, 150 countries or so. But what he's saying is that the distribution on this specific film is quite complicated because he feels, this is his own belief, that the media are not willing to touch this story as much as previous films that he's done, like on Mal Michael Jackson or Lady Gaga, or less controversial topics. So he says that he ha he's going to have it distributed by early September or late August. Maya Margit, thanks very much for that. A glimpse into that film, a controversial film, maybe not as controversial as